So here is the scenario for the day. It is sunny out. Just start there. This is the EB120. On yesterday, I put a uh, series parallel, whatever, <laughs> joint together for it. So it's charging a lot faster. But because this is up here, I'm missing out on power downstairs. But I got an idea. This is the GoPort P15. Uh, it is backwards, so that is not helpful. This is rated at 40 volts. Will this array come in lower than that 40 volts? And if it's one to two volts higher, will this thing allow it to charge? Will it fry it? Will it turn itself off to protect it against over voltage? I don't know how over voltage protection works. I don't know if it's at the battery or if it's at the device itself. The Foxy I kind of proved and led me to believe that over voltage protection is at the battery not at the charge controller. So uh, if anybody knows anything, let me know down in the comments, but let's carry on. So what I did the last time I needed to test voltage, I just put one thing on the outside and I tried my best to touch the joint on the inside and I got about 40 volts. Now, what I remember today is I have this uh, parallel cable from XTAR and then it, it terminates in Anderson. Now, what this allows me to do is to plug the eight millimeter into here and then I could test the voltage a little bit easier because of how Anderson is set up with its little leads inside. These are my leads hanging in there, so let's look at the voltage. Voltage says 41.92. Now here's the big question. Do I put it into this device? <laughs> I live a dangerous life, yes, I will. So the process of putting these in series has started. These are already in series and you can see right here, this is in series, which means one negative is connected to one positive, leaving the others open. And then I need the parallel cables to put them in parallel. What I'm gonna do is put the parallel cable behind this panel already. And then I'm gonna run an extension cord out to these. So this is what I'm looking at now, panel in series parallel adapters would typically going, be going into another panel but they're going into an extension cable and how that's going to end up is one going into there and one going into there can you see that extension is put in now and i went ahead and put the regular solar cables into the power station this all is meant to come in to this one source to go out to the power station over there like i said the situation is done and it just feels like a mess <laughs> And then the only thing left is to plug these joints into that, which I'm going to do in a second once I raise these panels up. Now, this device has a problem. It's not a problem. It's more of a, a issue to manage. And that issue is that, let me show you. Every Anderson port that I'm familiar with has this layout. This particular device does not have this layout. You can see that its joint is upside down, backwards, inverted, whatever. Every power station, solar panel, all things are configured in this way, but this one is not. But into the rock pals, both of my panels, which are right here, terminate in Anderson. In this regard, what I did, because this adapter came with them, I took these apart and I flipped them so that they could work. So I'll show you the difference in a second. The one on the right is how Andersons are typically configured. It'll pop right into the Foxion, no problem. Just like that, that's how that matches up. And you can see on the other side, I had to flip it around. So the positive is on the right side and not the left. So what that allows me to do is to pop this into this lead with no problem. Let's do that. Boom, dizzle, that's popped in. Now the beautiful thing about Anderson is you can do this. You can switch these things around as you see fit. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna pop this in and see if we get fireworks. Now, realistically, this is not a situation where I'm putting a 40 volt panel into something that's rated at 10 volts. It's a 42 volt array the MPPT charge controller would have to drop that down anyway. So this should work. Pop it in. I just heard a click. This one can take a little bit to get going. So it turned on. Oh, what we got here? Overload, nice. So it protected itself. That's good, but unfortunately for me, this doesn't solve my problem of needing a power station right here to take into this power. So, uh, I'm just gonna have to wait or grab the EB120 to pull down here to get the power off of this array. Man, I just went back to the EB20 and for those of you who know and watch the shorts, you know that I gave that one away. So this video is a little bit older. 